Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to today's UCM Virtual Customer Day 2020. So far, this year has been a great challenge for all of us. A direct and personal contact with you was very difficult due to all cancelled trade shows and events. However, as a driver of innovation and a market leader in industrial parts cleaning, it is our aim to stay in contact with you and to introduce you to the latest trends. Ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to today's UCM Virtual Customer Day 2020. So far, this year has been a great challenge for all of us. For instance, a direct and personal contact with you was very difficult due to all cancelled trade shows and events. However, as a driver of innovation and a market leader in industrial parts cleaning, it is our aim to stay in contact with you and to introduce you to the latest trends and uh, technological developments of UCM precision cleaning systems. So today you will have the chance to listen to four different lectures. Um, one of it, the highlight uh, right from the first, the new introduction of our UCM SmartLine, a modular and highly flexible precision cleaning system. During all lectures, you will have the chance to drop in some questions by using the comment function. And after each lecture, our experts will be pleased to answer all your questions. So now let me hand over to Mr. Roger Konen for his first lecture today, UCM SmartLine, Precision Cleaning Systems. Hello, welcome to our presentation of the UCM SmartLine, our brand new modular cleaning system. The UCM SmartLine applications. With new and higher product requirements, changed production processes, as well as partially stricter regulations, the demands for part cleanliness are continuously growing. To meet these new market conditions, EcoClean and uh, with EcoClean UCM have developed the new UCM SmartLine, an innovative and modular ultrasonic immersion type cleaning system. Which are our target markets? The film film coating market prior to PVD, VCD coating of uh, mountings, drills, cutting and inserts. The precision optics, optical filters and apertures, micro-optical components, lenses, laser components, glass objects and sapphire wafers. The medical components, here we see our USM smart line clearly as the pre-cleaning and intermediate cleaning installation. For surg surgical instruments, orthopedic devices, dental devices, uh, Syrinx and cannulas, prosthetic implants and implants. And then the precision mechanics and precision market. Watch components, sensor parts, injection components, valve train components. Utsem Smartline equipment design. I will show you now directly on the USAM smart line the different positions of our equipment design. USM Smart Lines is equipped with a really intuitive uh, touch screen from Siemens. We have just seen here the loading station and now in this moment the transport system is loading the transport carrier. This is a so servo motor driven transport system which is now loading the first cleaning tank which is equipped with ultrasound and that can be bottom ultrasound or side ultrasound. The transport system is really smoothy and part gentle handling. You see also the complete enclosure of the installation with the indication lamp of the situation of the installation and everything is here in stainless steel. Also do you see here the oscillation system Now we load the basket into uh, first 
rinsing step, for example, tap water rinsing for bringing off the ten sides of the cleaning agent. This can also be occupied with ultrasound. And then the carrier is bring on to a DI water rinsing step for having spot free parts in the end. You see also on the top of the installation a laminar flow boxes with HEPA filtered air for having really good air conditions into the installation. In the end here will be also dedicated to the cleaning recept, a uh, final rinsing step and afterwards maybe a hot air dryer or an infrared dryer depending the parts with which to clean. Now we see here the unloading, uh, the loading of the carrier on the unloading position. Thank you very much. Use smart line. Here we see now a typical seven bed cleaning installation, and also the number two here, one, two, and four are rinsing like a cleaning baths with ultrasound. Number three and five are rinse baths, and uh, for example, we have number six with a fine rinse bath with ultrasound, and then we have the possibility of a final fine rinse bath number seven which works in cascade with bath number six. We have, as just mentioned before, the laminar flow boxes on the top of the cleaning installation and here also the hot air dryer, the infrared dryer and the unload position. We will work with this system in modules and here we see a configuration of several modules. So we have the individual model types are load and unload model here in position the first position and in the last position and we have a two in one model for uh, for example here now in position three four five six and we have a three in one model for example here in position number two uh, the various process stations are loading unloading ultrasound cleaning ultrasonic rinsing ultrasonic as an option ultrasonic rinsing with DI de water and drying and here for we use a hot air dryer, an infrared dryer or a vacuum dryer. Here we see a typical configuration of a nine wet process installation with two drying positions and manual loading from the operator side. Here are some examples of our possibilities. Uh, our big advantage is the flexibility of the system. So we have here now a minimum configuration which makes sense from our point of view with three bath and one dryer and we have also manual loading and unloading position. Then we have here the maximum configuration with nine, nine bath and two dryers also manual loading and unloading from the operator side and here an example of just mentioned before a seven bath cleaning installation with two dryers. Concerning the loading and unloading, we have uh, several possibilities. So we have first the manual loading will be happen from inline system, like we see here, or maybe from the operator side, the same for the unloading and manual from the operator side or inline. But we have also the automatic mode, and there we can work with an automotive operated conveyor, and this is provided for loading and unloading of the transport racks. Depending on the length of the conveyor, uh, the number of parts, uh, the parts carriers on the conveyor, the system can be operated fully autom in a fully automatic mode. Loading and unloading, various combinations are possible. So we can also say, let us make a manual loading and an automatic unloading, for example. Many possibilities we have here. technical description and configuration equipment. So we have here now the bath dimension uh, 370 by 420 
by 440 millimeter. We have a two side overflow which we named 180 degree overflow. The surfaces, inside surface of the bath, are electro polished for having really a high cleaning results. All external surfaces of the bath are insulated uh, for having not uh, too high energy consumption of the heating. We have a rinse flow direction from the bottom. If you see here, we have the rinse tube on the bottom of the installation and we have an overflow to these two sides here. An option is also the tank rim extraction system you see here now and we can add it on here to our to our valve here on the side and so we can directly extract the vapor coming out of the cleaning agents on the top of the of the surface. This option is maximum disponible for, for bath. So we speak about the hot air dryer. The dimension of the top opening are 340 by 370 by 440 millimeters. We have two different filters as uh, are possible. So we have an F9 filter or an, a an EPA H40 filter as an option. The adjustment of the airflow uh, we can adjust via supply and exhaust air and the uh, filtration circuit rate uh, depends on the filter quality you, s you, you choose. So we have an F9 filter, we have 2.1 cubic meter per hour and we have the H40 filter, then we have 1.5 cubic meter per hour. The heating system, the rating is around 9 kilowatt. The maximum temperature on the part is limited here to 90 degree and this limitation coming out of the filter, the heat resistance of the filter. So the temperature in front of the filter is maximum 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, we have as an option, we have also the possibility to add on a motorization, electrification of the holder so that we can add and work also with rotation, with a transport track with a rotation system. We see here now, these are the holders which can be electrified for having rotation also in the during the drying process in the drying chamber which will give of course much better drying results if you have uh, yeah, maybe parts with blind holes for example. Then we have here the cover automatic lead so of course the system is completely closed also really good for energy consumption. We have two side inlet air here on the top and on this other side and opposite side we have the uh, temperature sensor in the bottom of the installation and here also the exhaust for the saturated air. The, the return of the air is also in the, in the top, in the bottom here and uh, so that will go back to the filter and the heating element. We have as another option the possibility to work with an infrared wire and here we have also the diminishing dimension of the opening 340 by 370 by 440 millimeter. The exhaust air is controlled via the airflow in the bottom of the infrared wire. Then uh, the air income is guaranteed by the HEPA filter boxes, the laminar flow boxes in the top of the cleaning installation so that we have here really really good uh, air conditions for drying for example optical parts. We speak about two 700 watt infrared wires which we used and uh, we have also the possibility to add on an electrification here as an option. Why this electrification? So we can also work with a rotation in the top of this or in this infrared wire in the end. The measurement of the temperature you see here is be done by the temperatures sensor in the bottom of the installation. Here we can also see and resume the maintenance opening for changing and exchanging the heat elements. We have the extraction system which is connected to the extraction system of the company, of the, cu of the customer. We have the infrared heating elements and the holders with or without electrification for the baskets. As an option, 
and only on request we have also the possibility to work with a vacuum dryer. This vacuum dryer can also be equipped with an infrared dryer, so it will be a combination of vacuum infrared and the infrared will bring new energy to the parts for having better cleaning uh, drying results in the end. The dimension of the opening are 340 millimeters by 370 by 440 millimeters. The exhaust air is also controlled and the input air is also filtered for not having recontamination of the parts in a working chamber. The heating elements are, in this case you see it here, also 2 times 700 watt infrared heating elements. Uh, huge. We can work with two different pumps, even with an either rain, rain type or therapy pump or glended pump or dry running pump, better call it. You see also a picture. The vacuum dryer is also insulated from the outside for energy reasons. And uh, here you see also an example of an a vacuum pump. Of course, the system is completely closed. If not, we cannot work with vacuum. Then, for having really good cleaning results and bringing out particles and not having negative input of the ultrasound on your parts, we have an oscillation here in this system. So, we have here a holder for 3 till 9 racks, depending the configuration of the installation. We have an oscillation height of 40 mm that will have a really good impact of the ultrasound frequency on your surface of the part. Each station combination of transport racks is possible. So you can also say, I will make add on an electrification. You see it here. These holders, for example, are electrificated so that we can have here coming out of the cleaning receipt which we use to make here in rotation. But in the next, we will work, for example, with a static transport rack so that uh, you are really flexible with the system and you can even work with several different uh, racks at the same time in this installation. We have the optional possibility to add on a frequency converter and with this frequency converter we can uh, change the speed um, of the movements between 10 and 28 movements per minute. Coming we, we're coming now to the automatic transport system. This transport system is a servo motor driven system which works really part gentle, so without shocks and uh, without creating particles in, uh, in the region in front of the parts or on top of the, of the parts. So we have an, a motor for horizontal movement with this gear wheel. We have a horizontal guiding uh, guide rail. We have the vertical linear unit and we have the motor for the vertical uh, vertical movement with angular, angular gear and of course the down the support rail for having a smooth movement also. We can work in several directions as you can mention here and even we have the possibility to work here with a slow lift out which is really common and really positive way to, to work in front of uh, I will say the most of the time in the last uh, the eye water rinsing step so that you have not so many uh, water on your part for the drying process. Even for yeah, the optics is a really often used uh, tool. Uh, the maximum speed of the transport system is uh, one meter per uh, second. The for the horizontal way, for the vertical way is 0 0.5 meter per second and the acceleration is around one meter per second. Weight for static loading is maximum 20 kilogram. The installation can be worked with maximum two vertical linear uh, motion units and that is coming out of the throughput that we need uh, to work with. If you have a high throughput, of course, you will be limited with one transport system, so we uh, consider to you to work with a second. We have several different possibilities of transport rack, so we have the standard st static transport rack and we have here now 
an uh, electrified and motorized transport rack with ho horizontal rotation and motion. Here you see now a round drum, but it can also be a basket. Uh, in the end, we are limited in the external dimension of the round drum. And we have the possibility to work with a vertical part adaption and agitation, and that is uh, the most of the time for micro lenses. Uh, it's really often used. Coming to our HMI operator panel, here we work with Siemens in a really nice and smooth working touchscreen system which gives you many, many informations and also you can look in detail what's happening in installation. For example, if you see here now, we have here the complete system with all bath and two drying stations. This here is coming from the seven bath and two drying stations. You can touch the bath and then you will see in detail how are the, the temperatures in the bath. Uh, it's the bath, uh, the basket into the bath and so on. So we have many possibilities to see the process running. Um, the HMI is fixed on a swivel type of so that you can also swivel it. We have uh, minimized the number of buttons. Um, so that is also, for example, for the medical market is a high demand for this. What are the key features? We have a process editor. We have a process visualization so that you see in, uh, in, in, in serious time how the baskets or how many baskets are directly cleaned. We have the monitoring of the process times, we have the prioritization and we have an intuitive and clear user interface. Of course, we can also work with CSV files for traceability. Special features and advantages. What are the special features and advantages of our USAM smart line? The modular and multi-stage ultrasonic immersion cleaning system for high and ultra high cleaning requirements. We have variable ultrasonic equipment for using mono, twin or multi-frequency ultrasonics. So we'll say for mono we can work with 25, 40 or 80 kilohertz. For multi we can work with 40, 80, uh, 20 or 40 or 40 and 80 kilohertz and for the multi 40, 80 or 20 kilohertz. We have a flexible transport system for optimization, optimized throughput and gentle part handling. If it's necessary coming out of the throughput we can even work with two on transport systems. We have a really high quality enclosure for protecting the parts and the, and the, uh, the operators from contaminations and emissions. The compact design will integrate with integrated cabinets for each model. So we have here really unique point. We have integrated the electrical cabinets in the back of this installation. So that gives you a big advantage coming out of footprint and of less uh, connection effort. So you can really fast connect this installation. And if you are troubleshooting problems, you can even found directly and really fast also in the electrical cabinet. This, uh, this problems. We have a high adaptable to changing market conditions thanks to ability to add optional models. So if you are growing, your installation can also grow with you and your market. We have flexible shipping options, delivery as one complex unit or in modules. So we can also say if you have not a space for bring it in one part in your plant, we can bring it in several modules and we have this possibility. And of course really short delivery times. We speak about five uh, maximum six months delivery time for this complete standardized installation. Even we have developed um, a, a configuration tool. With this tool we are really able and really fast able to provide you a proposal in a really short time because this, mo this installation is completely standardized. So I thank you very much for your attention and if you have questions, feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Hello Babette. Roger, thank you for your presentation. Uh, welcome. Um, we have over 100 participants in the live stream right now. You still have the possibility to ask your questions via the comment field. So please feel free. Uh, we will receive them here also live and Roger um, will be happy to answer them. You're welcome. 
So, first question, uh, you mentioned the medical industry. Um, for which applications in this industry um, was the UCM Smartline designed for? Uh, we see clearly the UCM Smartline in the medical market, but for the pre and intermediate cleaning coming out of our material choice, uh, we are limited in this way. And besides the medical industry, do you see other application fields where the UCM Smartline is the yeah, best opportunity for those? Um, of course, we see the UCM Smart Eye clearly in the tooling industry, uh, cleaning before PVD, uh, uh, CVD uh, coating. Then in the uh, medical market, we already mentioned, and there are also for um, dental implants, for example. Then for the optical wise, also we see this installation really clearly. Then we have also implemented an infrared dryer an infrared wiring chamber or even an infrared wire on the unloading uh, system. And we see the USM smart line, of course, in uh, the precision market for cleaning of uh, uh, precision parts. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, regarding the tooling industry, uh, you know, we have often the case that we are talking about capillary components. And you mentioned uh, you the infrared and the hot air drying. What kind of drying would you recommend for those uh, parts, um, especially in the tooling um, or precision industry? Um, we have standard uh, installation occupied with an infrared wire and also with a uh, hot air dryer. But for this higher um, drying requirements, uh, we have the possibility also to add on a vacuum dryer. If we have uh, capillaries like uh, Babet just mentioned in the tooling industry, or even we have now uh, precision parts uh, with a complex geometry and small channels and blind holes, uh, we can also implement uh, on request a vacuum dryer system. Mm -hmm. um, Matt is asking um, to about clean room. To what extent can the UCM smart line be connected to a clean room? We have the possibility to connect the UCM smart line directly to a clean room. Um, therefore, we can uh, work with the uh, sliding doors. And um, yeah, standard, we have the possibility to work with an ISO class 6 or ISO class 5 uh, mm -hmm. clean room. And um, even we can make an automatic conveyor system in the clean room for having a uh, certain uh, throughput extension. Mm -hmm. Another question from Frank. Um, he's asking um, how do you see the smart line in the Dutch supply chain around the semiconductor industry? Uh, I see this installation, um, it's, it's really a topic for this installation. Then we speak here about uh, higher, uh, reaching higher cleanliness requirements. The installation is able that we can configure the installation with up to nine baths. So we have many possibilities to make cleaning and rinsing. And also in the end, we have a DI water rinsing uh, system uh, or two DI water rinsing tanks, which can connect it to the DI water uh, treatment system. So we can work in a closed loop. Afterwards, I just mentioned we can work with a hot air dryer or infrared dryer, even with the, with the vacuum dryer for complicated parts. Yes, um, is a real, is a good solution for this uh, for these applications. Mm -hmm. um, another question regarding cleaning trials: Is it already possible to run clean trials on the smart line? Yes, um, our test center, our showroom in Monjo is equipped with a new SEM smart line and even connect to an uh, ISO class 6 uh, clean room. So we have here now in place a seven uh, bath installation with a uh, hot air and an uh, infrared wire. So we have the possibility to make cleaning trials in Monschau. Our showroom in Rheineck in uh, Switzerland at UCM will be occupied uh, very, very soon. And also our colleagues in the United States in Southfield uh, have already uh, UCM smart line installation in place. And uh, yes, you are welcome. Uh, then we not only provide you um, an installation, we provide you the complete process and a complete solution. Mm -hmm. Um, Michael is asking, is it also possible to switch the uh, ultrasonic generator for a megasonic one? Um, at this moment, uh, the installation is not uh, dedicated to megasound. 
Uh, we work now in this moment standard wise. We have mono ultrasound 25, 40 or 80 kilohertz. We have twin ultrasound 40 or 80, 40, 80 kilohertz. And we have multi 40, 80, 120 kilohertz. So, um, and even bottom and one side. Um, but if you, you choose or you need um, this uh, mega sound, we have other applications in our company from UCM which are able to provide you this, uh, this mega sound. Okay, thank you very much, Roger, um, for answering the questions. The next presentation will be at 1.30, so we would like to end now the Q&A session. Um, of course, all the participants whose question could not be answered by Roger, um, please feel free to still um, send them and you will be uh, contacted personally afterwards. Thank you, Roger. Thank you. It was a pleasure also. talking to you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed our first lecture on the UCM Smartline Modular Precision Cleaning System. Now follow the lecture presented by Mr. Andreas uh, custom specific UCM ultrasonic cleaning systems. Welcome to the first UCM virtual customer day. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed our first lecture on the UCM Smartline modular precision cleaning system. Now follow the lecture presented by Mr. Andreas Netz on uh, custom specific UCM ultrasonic cleaning systems. Welcome to the first UCM virtual customer day and good afternoon. Therefore, the following information should give you an insight how we start a customized project and how we define and design a customized solution. Areas of application and components are mostly in the coating industry, in the precision optics, in medical technology and also in precision mechanics. At UCM we basically talk about precision or fine cleaning or ultra fine cleaning. The difference of this definition depends on the input conditions and how clean the parts are has to, are have to be. Input conditions are around 200 to 100 micron Achievable values are approx less than 10 to 1 micron, film residues from oil free and decreased to atomic percent values for residual organics. In the past, the topic was often not as clean as possible, but as clean as necessary. Today, we rather ask about how exactly can and must be checked the parts purity according to the VDA-19 is limited. Less than five 15 micron is not possible. More precise purity for particle and filmic uh, contaminations are already done with R REM or SEM, scanning electronic uh, microscope, and, R and RGA, residual gas analysis. Therefore, it's important to know what is really needed to define a customized solution. That is also the reason why we also definite uh, in the name of the type of cleaning. So we can say, typically, yeah, uh, the, as higher the requirements are, the higher the, clinic, the cleaning's affords. Before we talk about the cleaning method, the most important criteria are to be clarified. This could be also the component specification about the geometry, the weight and the material or materials. Also rather important is component contamination and requirement cleanness. Organic, mineral, biological quantity, residues in microgram per centimeter, per square centimeters, sorry, and particle in microgram. Further important is the throughput, how many parts per, per time or per basket is very interesting and necessary to know. 
The task after cleaning means if you want to inspect or coating or make an assembling in a clean room area. The systems, the processes and the, and the technologies are important which process and which technology is suitable for the application. You can imagine if you have very oiled and degreased parts, it's necessary and we recommend a pre-cleaning, for instance, with a solvent cleaning machine, as we will hear in the, in the next and following presentation. And uh, the reason is for that to eliminate all the oil and degrease out of the, the final cleaning system. In the EcoClean group, we have the great advantage to having all known cleaning processes in our portfolio. In addition to the bath cleaning system shown here, we also have solutions for single part cleaning, clocked or via a multi-axis robot cell. In addition, we also have high pressure cleaning systems, high pressure deburring systems, also as well as plasma, laser, steam, or airflow and vacuum systems. After the pre-cleaning, we try to define the final cleaning. And this is what we have heard and seen before. Our colleague, Mr. Um, uh, <laughs> our colleague has shown before in the, in the presentation with a standard machine, a water-based standard machine to have uh, intermediate or final cleaning or we go to a final cleaning system or a intermediate final cleaning system with a customized UCM individual machine. The customer specif specific cleaning systems are always fully automated. They can be from a small compact machine means with 40 liter tanks. So at least the minimum process we can uh, realize with small tanks are uh, cleaning, pre-rinsing, final rinsing and drying before coating, for instance. This could be also made by 1000 liter tanks in uh, depending of the process you need. And the individuality must then be defined accordingly. <coughs> so also here is very important uh, the decision which process and which technology is suitable for the application when we talk about the equipment inside the tanks. <coughs> we start at first with a basket or also with the product carriers and the use dimension we want to clean. As we can see here in the basket, we have the, the product window here inside we want to clean. We have to define the outside dimension of our basket depending on the baskets we want to clean and also for, for the product you want to turn in the baskets. It's depending on the geometry and uh, to, to have the right uh, equipment inside the machine to clean during we have the rotation. For that, we have a calculation tool to define, to define um, the, the tank volume, the basket volume, to have uh, inside the, the ultrasonics equipment, we have the heating equipment and also um, to, to define uh, what kind of uh, solution we need inside the tank to have the best result during cleaning, uh, rinsing and drying. For that we, give, we have uh, some dimension uh, about the tank volume with ultrasonic, without ultrasonic and also if we need ultrasonic only from the bottom or from the left and or from the, uh, from the right side. The calculation of the heating you need is depending on the tank volume and also the initial time from the end time to the heating time. So that means the power we need to heat up the tank during uh, one or two hours. If you calculate all this, we have the different kind of numbers for the loading position, the number of cleaning tanks, the number of rinsing tanks and also the number of drying tanks and unloading position. 
So we have here an information, the first information about the, the dimension of the whole machine, which is important to know if it is fixed in the, in the area we want to install it. Yeah. The next step is uh, a, coordin a coordination of optional equipment, which may be also an effect to the system dimensions. Basically, the UCM tanks have a four or a two side overflow and also a different uh, kind of ultrasonic connections. This is very important because the, the four side overflow is for UCM a standard. A two side overflow is a possibility to get uh, the, the, the machine and the tanks more compact. Yeah. But, the but the function are also very, uh, very similar and very s the same because the overflow rate for each tank during cleaning and rinsing must be as high as possible. Yeah. The, the, the pumps are also equipped uh, with, with uh, um, a frequency converter that we can reduce uh, the speed during ultrasonic, that we have no um, critical positions uh, during the filtration and uh, the function of ultrasonics. The filtration, the filtration itself, the equipment, depending, is uh, uh, about the tank volume, the overflow rate, uh, the surface uh, bottom filtration, and also if we have a combination of both systems. It's depending on the kind of dirt which is uh, growing up on the surface or in the middle of the tank or on the bottom of the tank. What we also need is an integrated or an attached uh, rim suction in connection with an automatic lid. The reason for that is important because the consideration for hor horizontal transport is when a basket goes over the basket, so we need a little bit space inside the machine, so the height of the machine could be very critical. Another option or a po um, um, uh, possibility we can recommend is uh, during a, a spraying or a pressure flow rate or pressure fluting inside the tank. So it's possible to have both function in one tank. In the bottom side, we will, we will check uh, the equipment we need for pressure fluting. And on the upper side of the tank, on the second floor, floor we have uh, spraying systems to use different kind of water quality, for instance, and to get a better result after one rinsing position. A combined immersion spray rinsing for different water qualities, uh, that's what I mean, what I talked before. And the spraying and pressure floating is possible to have, to have this in, in different tanks. So spray rinsing or spray cleaning, pressure flooding uh, cleaning or pressure floating rinsing, all these functions are possible in different kind of tanks. Chemical, chemical cabinet for automatic uh, detergent dosing is a question if you want to automize the automatic uh, flow for, for agents during the cleaning that you are sure that you have all the same um, conditions during uh, one day or two days and you have to refill with a flow meter uh, with fresh water and have uh, the dimension of uh, the chemical dosing uh, which you give uh, the values inside the system. Also important is to know the loading and unloading concepts. There are different kind of possibilities, maybe a wet loading or you have con conveyor belts uh, which uh, use one basket without any uh, motorized systems, a basket return or a connection to the clean room area. The UCM for philosophy is uh, mostly to, to eliminate the dirt inside the tanks as fast as possible. That's the reason why we have filtration in each tank. And to rinse the parts as effectively, uh, effectivity as possible using the dilution principle. So that means we will use a lot of water and uh, if we have too much water, we don't train it, we trade it with a separate system uh, to have all the time the same quality, which is very important to have uh, the best quality after, after trying. To get uh, spotless free results and the requirements uh, the after the trying uh, at all the time. 
The next step is also very important, coordination of space availability. So we have to know if you want to install the system in an industrial area, in a grey room or inside into a clean room area. So for that it's important to know the equipment, the outside uh, equipment itself. As a further necessity is a system, a layout to create in, ad in advance to determine whether the available space, area and height is sufficient. If this is guaranteed, we can also start the system, uh, system configuration, uh, which we also can create it before if the space is enough for the machine. Here's one possibility, a takeover of an ex ex existing process with recommendation equipment or options or define of a new process. So for instance, here we have an example. You can see also the loading position, the number of uh, cleaning tanks with the equipment in each tank, uh, for instance, heating, connection, a rin exhaust, a gravity oil separator, for instance, the bottom filtration, magnate filtration, a surface filtration, and also the ultrasonics from different sides, from the bottom, from left, and also from the, from, from the right side. What we also can show here is the power and the frequencies we want to install inside the machine to see uh, the, um, that, that um, the, the recommendation uh, works accordingly to, 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 to other examples we made before. And this is uh, the reason why we can give this information before we make some, some tests in our lab. The other thing is uh, the, the rinsing position. So here you can see what kind of quality we use. A DI water, uh, maybe by room temperature. Uh, the next uh, free flow rating cascade from tank 5 to tank 3. Uh, also from tank eight, uh, 9 to tank 8. Or for instance from, from other tanks so that we have the flow rate in cascades. The other possibility is also what we talked before, the bottom filtration, magnet filtration or a surface filtration depending on the dirt which come into the machine. Other kind of cleaning, other, other kind of cleaning uh, products we used is a water-based uh, cleaning products, um, uh, maybe by, by um, heating connection uh, or, or rim exhaust. And the data guns are water-based Maybe it's alkaline base, um, acid or nitrile uh, basis. Also, we have uh, the bottom filtration, the different kind of ultrasound power and ultrasound frequencies from the bottom or the left or the right side. Further things is uh, the, the final rinsing part where we have the, the DI water. At first, we also talk about DI water, but this can also be uh, city water or osmosis water. Uh, in, the, in the final rinsing, we have uh, mostly one, two or maximum three tanks, also in cascade, uh, also heated and uh, the same um, equipment as we talked before. We can use filtration, ultrasonic and um, the, the flow rate of the cascade is very important that we use uh, some 100 or some thousands liter per hour to, to guarantee that uh, the, the change inside the tank is a maximum to be sure that we have a spotless free drying in the end with infrared or with hot air or with vacuum drying systems. At the end we have uh, the, the unloading position also with number of, of uh, buffer uh, positions where we can say we go straight in line the, ta uh, the, the machine or we can uh, also uh, install it 90 degrees to the machine with or without um, installation into the clean room area. This is one possibility where we can make a first price indication and to show this is, uh, this is our uh, recommended uh, solution and this is what we can uh, discuss with the customer afterwards. If there is space enough for the machine in the, air, in, the, in, in, in the area we want to install it, if the process and recommended options are okay, we can uh, make some, some general tries in, in, our, in our laboratories, in our technical laboratories, take over existing chemistry. This is also uh, important to discuss with the customer. 
or with optimization about the chemicals when we when we talk with uh, suppliers what they can recommend uh, depending on uh, the, the requests and the, the efforts rinsing and drying options this is also what we can show and 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 see what kind of drying systems are usable and uh, effective actively so what we can show in our lab is uh, mainly the execution of principal trials to identify trends yeah, this is important because uh, in the most cases we, we uh, have never uh, always uh, the perfect and exactly machine we need. So what we need, what kind of equipment we want to install, this is our experience and we want to see some trends um, um, uh, about the, the quality of, of cleaning and rinsing and drying. And then we can define, as we showed before, in our system configuration, what kind of options we have to add. The next step is that we also talk about the definition of baskets or the product carriers. So uh, in, in a lot of cases we can see that customers wanted uh, to use their own baskets, their own carriers. Though, so this is uh, what we talked before, that we knew that we have to knew at, at, at first step the, the, the goods windows and what kind of carrier we want to need to clean and uh, have the optimized position after for, for the cleaning, rinsing and drying steps. Yeah. You can see here different uh, possibilities to clean uh, some lenses or wafers. We have different kind of posi possibilities to clean uh, the tools in three levels. Yeah. This is very important to see because it's not very easy to clean and rinse. A possibility that we also have uh, um, uh, an, an air knife because, because, uh, before we go into a, um, a hot air dryer. That means we blow the, the, the water on the surface away uh, so that we have a spotless free drying with uh, warm air. Another possibility is for instance for automa automatic uh, uh, parts from the car industry or the supplier from the car industry to have exact positions. This is also important uh, that the, the, the parts are not possible to, to have a connection each other or uh, the same with uh, the lenses we have here. This could be also a cleaning for before inspection, before coating or before um, assembling in, in clean room area. Uh, this is a very special uh, possibility to clean uh, micro optics, micro optics in a special carrier which are recommended uh, from the customer and the customer wanted uh, to clean um, his micro optics uh, in the same carrier for cleaning and also for the coating. That it is not possible or not necessary to change the optics from one, from rom, uh, from one customer carrier to the next carrier. This is very important for the customer itself uh, that he not, doesn't uh, need too much time. So UCM can provide recommendations and support in the implementation uh, to optimize the cleaning, rinsing and drying of the parts. Um, the goods carrier transport frame is also very important. This gives us uh, the outside dimension and uh, at least uh, the, the minimum dimension of the tank. This is the basket and the frame and everything we want to clean is very essential uh, part of, uh, the uh, to a of achieving uh, the results. Some examples, uh, for instance, in the optical industry, here we can see that we have uh, the final cleaning before vacuum coating in the clean room, depending on materials, throughput and requirements. That, 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 knows, uh, that, uh, that shows you that we have, uh, or it could be possible that we have different kind of materials. That's the reason why we use uh, one, two or three different kind of cleaning products. And uh, depending on the throughput, it means that we, that we uh, have to define the rinsing part and the final rinsing part and also the number of positions. That um, is also for, for the drying systems. Also, depending on the throughput, how many positions we, we absolutely need to, to be sure that the throughput is possible. 
the integration of the system operation operation side in the clean room or on the, the other side the maintenance side in the service room this is also possible to install the machine in a special uh, area that uh, you, uh, you don't have to to install the machine itself uh, into a clean room area Another example is automotive industry. So here we talk about, for instance, for final cleaning before wear protection coating, depending also here on material throughput and requirements. Sometimes it's, um, uh, it's possible that we have to demagnetize uh, the parts before we have to clean, to rinse and dry it. And uh, during rinsing, this is also possible if you have materials like 100 uh, chrome 6 that we need a protection during the rinsing part and uh, this is uh, very um, uh, necessary to have a spotless free and a perfect drying without corrosion. The rest is also possible as before, uh, for instance a basket return or also with a fully, fully automatic parts loading in the goods carrier as well as removal uh, from the goods carrier, maybe for instance uh, with a pick and play system or a magnetic handling. A further example is uh, from the high tech or high purity industry. So you can see that we have uh, different kind of, of area equipment. Uh, maybe we install the, cl the machine directly into the clean room, clean room as a uh, area ISO 5 or ISO 6. And the final cleaning before assembly in the clean room is also here depending every time about the materials, the throughput and the requirements. The main process uh, what we installed in the past um, is uh, three times for cleaning. That means alkaline, acid or, or, or neutral. Three times rinsing and three times uh, rinsing of, uh, in with uh, final DI water. And two times vacuum drying to have uh, the, the optimi optimization in the throughput. In the, main, in the main examples, we have also an in-feed uh, into the clean room. Uh, in the also in the, maze, in the most um, um, examples, we, we, have to, we have to install the clean room area ISO 5. Conditions in the machine area or in a part of a machine, uh, maybe for, for the last rinsing and drying and um, the, the position we have to give over to the clean room area. Yeah. The automatic base basket return is also a possibility to install. A further uh, example is the tooling industry. Uh, maybe it could be in this case a pre and final cleaning before wear protection coating in the clean room depending also here it's again and again the same on uh, materials throughput and requirements. This uh, shows us um, the, the, uh, the numbers of cleaning tank, rinsing tank, also the final rinsing and drying uh, system started, started uh, before we, we go into the hot air, hot air drying with a blow up system to eliminate all the water drops of the parts, a fully automatic loading of the buffered goods carrier into the transport rack uh, by a multi-axis robot is also possible. Uh, depending on the number of parts we have to clean or to have to put in the basket or eliminate out of the basket. And um, the unloading buffer um, is, is also uh, automated uh, and bring the, ba the baskets uh, back to the, to the loading part. A last um, uh, possibility in med medical technology is, uh, could be maybe uh, a linking uh, with a solvent machine as we heard uh, from, uh, or will be heard from, from our colleague in, in the next presentation, based on pre-cleaning and water-based intermediate cleaning after mechanical processing or non-sterile packaging. This is a possibility which we discussed with a customer which want to, to uh, reinstall all the, new equi uh, the old equipment to a new equipment. And um, the second uh, part was uh, a capacity expansion with a second water-based uh, intermediate cleaning uh, uh, position or machine um, to have uh, more capacity in the, in the factory. At least uh, we come back to the, the criteria mentioned in the beginning. 
with uh, serve as basis and defining a possibility solution in a very close condition with a customer. This is very important to discuss with the customer what is existing or what is new um, uh, recommended. And however, the know-how, the experience, uh, our experience from a large variety of realized individual solution is, is very, very interesting and very, very necessary to find and design um, uh, the the um, the solution for 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 you, for our customers, and um, is this, uh, this is also reliability, a certainty of feasibility, as well as the positive feedback from our customers. So at the end, I can say thank you very much for your attention, and I would be very pleased uh, to answer your question. Hello, Andreas. Thank you very much for your Hello. presentation. Thank you. Uh, we already received a lot of questions from our participants. You also still have the possibility to send in your questions via the common field. So please feel free to send them and we will receive them live. Um, so then Andreas will uh, answer those. Okay, the first question uh, is regarding the dilution principle. Uh, what is it and could you just shortly explain the function? Yes. Yes. Uh, the dilution principle means uh, that we, um, we have in all tanks our filtration and during the rinsing uh, part we fill in also a lot of fresh water and uh, this is uh, the dilution to get um, or to avoid uh, the the, the dirt in the last rinsing tank in the DI tank and that's that me that's uh, the meaning of the dilution. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Uh, one point I just saw that we are five minutes late so uh, we are late in time so the next presentation will start a little bit later. Um, please excuse that. Andreas, next question. Uh, could you just shortly explain the difference between the smart line and the like a special UCM machine yes. in a few sentences. Yes, uh, the smart line is uh, a standard machine with uh, special dimension, uh, in this case only with one dimension, exactly for, for the basket and for the tanks, and also the possibility of options. And in the UCM machine, the individual uh, UCM machines, you have all of the possibilities and all of the dimension you need, and uh, that's the, the main dis uh, difference between mm. the, the smart line and the UCM individual machine. Another question from Peter um, regarding the four sides and the two sides overflow. Um, could you give a short explanation for that, please? Um, the main principle is uh, during the filtration inside the tank that the medium uh, comes from the, from the, the bottom side and uh, the overflow is on four sides or on two sides. It's depending on the dimension of, uh, of the, the whole plant. But um, the overflow will, will uh, be possible on all, all four sides uh, inside the tank. Tim is asking the question about the osmosis and um, the eye water. Um, is also city water, um, can city water be also used? Um, principally, uh, is, it, it, is it possible to use also the city water? The city water is uh, a little bit negative about the minerals inside the, the water and uh, we prefer to use uh, high quality water like osmosa and the eye water, uh, especially for the conductivity of this uh, quality, that's important to, to get uh, spotless free um, parts after drying. So how would you measure this uh, quality of the water? Uh, we have a conductivity measurement inside the filtration mm -hmm. and uh, in osmose water we make the measurement uh, for instance, by 10 microsiemens, and uh, during the DI water uh, um, rinsing part, we have uh, possibly um, maybe 0.1 or less than 0.1 microsiemens. Mm -hmm. So these are also the values um, which are like typical yes. in this yes. um, in those terms, especially for fine cleaning or finest cleaning. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, is it, you also mentioned that we have different cleaning agents. Um, is it also possible to just use one cleaning agent? 
Yes, uh, it's a little bit depending of uh, the material you have to clean. Uh, as, uh, for instance, you have to clean uh, only aluminium. Uh, so it makes sense to, to use a cleaning agent which is uh, not too high alkaline and more neutral cleaning and um, or other uh, possibilities is uh, with uh, with brass or with um, other materials uh, which are use uh, more the neutral cleaning agents uh, than high alkaline or acid cleaning. Mm -hmm. So one last quick question um, from Mikal. Uh, in case of bigger amount of bath, amount of bath, is it also possible to use two or more robots um, for the basket movement? Yes, uh, it's a question of throughput. Mm -hmm. um, that means uh, if you have a high uh, throughput uh, in, the, in the plant, you need more robots uh, to, to make uh, the, the, the overflow inside the machine um, 10 or 15 baskets per hour, for instance. Okay. Andreas, thank you very much. Um, thank you. We will now start with the next presentation. Sorry again for the delay. All the questions um, you still might have, um, you can still send them via the comment field and we will be happy to answer them afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, after looking at the different system technologies, now follows a lecture presented by Mr. Volker Lehmann on solvent cleaning processes for precision cleaning applications. Thank you, Gaudens, and hello to everybody. So, what is the subject? Subject is nothing new, solvent cleaning, but in this case for precision applications. So the question is, are precision um, applications really a fit for a cleaning with solvent uh, processes? <coughs> so, first we want to introduce areas of applications for solvent cleaning systems in order to give you a background. Uh, what you see here is uh, on the left side a picture of one of our systems. It's called the EcoSeCore, which is uh, one of our um, machines for uh, the solvent cleaning machines program. And in the middle you see uh, the main components of this machine. So first it's the working chamber marked with one. This is the place where the whole cleaning and drying process is uh, done. And then uh, second and third, uh, the flood tank, the two flood tanks, and uh, the corresponding pumps with marked with seven and eight uh, to fill and empty the working chambers out of the flood tanks. Marked with uh, four is the distillation unit, which is responsible for the vapor decreasing and the um, regeneration of the system. In addition, uh, we see the marked with 10 and 9, uh, the drying condenser and the corresponding vacuum pump, which is the uh, responsible uh, drying uh, feature of the machine. And uh, in addition, we show you It, um, with 11, the heat recovery system in order to make the machine more energy efficient. And uh, also you see the water separator to take out the water marked with six. And optionally, we also show the continuous oil discharge unit, which can dispose the oil during the operation of the machine. All these systems typically work nowadays with hydrocarbons or with modified alcohols. So the process, in order to give you a better, even better uh, impression of how such systems work, the whole process is done in the working chamber. So the working chamber is getting loaded uh, with the baskets, which include the parts or carriers or fixtures or whatever. Then the door is getting closed and sealed and the process starts. The first step is that we evacuate the working chamber through the vacuum pump. So in order to have a vacuum uh, in the whole system, the whole process is, does work under vacuum. So the first process step is that we um, pump the fluid from the first flood tank into the working chamber and then the mechanics can start. We can rotate or oscillate the parts, we can do an ultrasonic treatment or we can do what we call an injection flood wash, which is pumping the uh, fluid 
through the pump, through the filter, back into the system to create a high turbulence in the machine. After the process step is finished, we empty the working chamber over pump, filter, back into the flood tank. So every single step is filtered. The same thing can be done out of flood tank 2, which is marked with 3. And finally, the last cleaning process step is the degreasing done out of the distillation unit. There, the vapor is getting um, into the working chamber and does the final degreasing of the parts. After this process, we dry the parts through the drying condenser to, uh, um, to get the, the vapor condensed and getting taken back into the system and through the vacuum pump to uh, dry the parts with the final drying pressure. After that, you vent the system, the working chamber, over uh, air from the outside. You open the door and the parts come out clean and dry. So, solvent machines are typically being used in uh, mass production components fields, like turn parts, milling parts, grinding parts, but also stamping parts, pressed parts, deep drawn parts, bended parts, and uh, also a group uh, which is called the hardware or fasteners, like rivets, bolts, nuts, screws, nails, and uh, also for fittings, couplings, small pipes, profiles, and so on. These are typical uh, applications to clean these parts after machining with a solvent cleaning system. So, in the middle, you see a picture that really demonstrates what a typical application for such a system is. So, you see screw machine parts, press parts with a lot of oil and chips. And after the cleaning, the parts come out bright and shiny and free of chips. So, by visual inspection, you consider these parts are perfect. So, typical requirements to these machines are you need a high throughput in order to uh, handle these lots of uh, thousands of parts. You need to be able to handle a lot of contamination, a uh, like chips, particles, and oils. And the cleanliness levels that you need to meet are typically particle-wise bigger than 200 micron, and the surface tension in the range of 38 billion millinewton uh, per meter. What does that mean in regards to the system? The system needs to be able to be fast. That means you need pumps with a high uh, uh, pump rate. You need a high energy uh, of vapor in order to heat up the parts fast. And you need a high regeneration capacity to ke uh, keep up with this uh, high volume of contamination that you take in such machines. So, but lately, an increasing number of requ uh, requests comes out of precision markets. Why is that? Filmic contaminations are getting more and more um, important to uh, precision markets. And therefore, since solvents are typically perceived as uh, good degreasers, it's obvious that customers think, well, it also, also should be a good uh, solution then for my filmic uh, contamination requirements. Uh, especially uh, these uh, requirements come out of the high purity industry, which are high vacuum components uh, built into wafer steppers, gas chromatographs, uh, mass spectrometers, uh, high power lasers, and so on. The uh, method, the method to uh, measure the filmic uh, contamination is uh, RGA, residual gas analysis, which is measures extremely low concentrations of hydrocarbons in, uh, that are still on the parts. Uh, another field is uh, cleaning prior to PVD coating, which are typically automotive parts or tools. There the measurement is typically done with microscopic uh, measurement or with uh, contact angle measurement. And finally, also medical applications are a concern. 
medical instruments, medical implants are getting machined and after the machining process they need to get cleaned and this, is, this can be done with the solvent uh, process. The measurement there is by measuring the TOC value of the components on the parts. So in order to make it more transparent, we have uh, prepared two examples for you. First, the first uh, example comes out of the high vacuum technology. And uh, we used a reference part, since there are so many different various components, um, a very uh, reference part has been designed to be able to get a good feeling if this is a right process, if it works or not. And this uh, part has been machined with blind holes, threaded holes, through holes and bars and so on, in order to make it as complicated as the real parts. And uh, the contamination uh, was always the same. It's a little bit of uh, processing oil and particles. The machine we used was a solvent machine working with modified alcohols and the solvent was not fresh. We regenerated the, um, the machine as good as possible, so we took the oil out through the continuous oil discharge unit and we changed the filters in order to have a good as possible quality of the solvent in the machine. And uh, after the tests, we measured the outgassing race rate, which is the RGA measurement, at a pressure of 10 times minus 12 millibars in order to see if we comply with uh, the specifications. As you see on the right side, uh, on the right side at the bottom, this is a fairly good result, but it wasn't just good enough. Next uh, example was cleaning of a uh, automotive component, injection component prior to PVD coating. So what we did is we cleaned the, we tested the real component, which uh, was also grounded and uh, had holes and uh, the contamination was very little since the parts have been pre-cleaned and were fairly clean. Only particles, dust and a little bit of grease out of the air had to be removed. Again, the trials have been done um, with a machine using modified alcohols. We did the same thing, we only regenerated the machine. We, don't, we didn't use fresh solvent. The cleanliness requirements were the parts had to be free of oil, free of grease, and no particles bigger than 50 micron after cleaning and prior to coating. What was the result? Well, we were extremely concerned with the high uh, requirements in terms of particle contamination. This wasn't actually the, the problem. The problem was that we found isolated small drops of oil that remained on the parts by a visual inspection under a microscope with a uh, hundred times resolution. So again, it was a very promising result, but not good enough to be able to coat the parts after these tests. So the summary is the results were not bad, but also it, it, uh, it was not good enough. So are these systems now suitable or are they not? Luckily enough, neither our customers nor we were willing to give up. So we took, we took the tests and we identified what are the issues. What were the issues? Why didn't we get the cleaning results we needed? So first, it's clear there must have been some oil left in the distillation, which we also could, um, we, we could detect it. Um, so what does that tell us? The continuous oil discharge unit is not able to take out 100% of the oil out of the system. But is this the only issue? No, definitely not, because the last cleaning process is done through the distillation unit with the vapor degreasing. So 
there must be the issue. There is still some oil left. We figured that out. And um, this oil must get on the parts. Either, uh, either way, uh, this, is, this must be the is issue. So we identified all the uh, parameters which, co uh, have a con which concern the quality of the vapor. And these are the height of the distillation tank, the uh, surface of the evaporation uh, surface of the solvent, the uh, pressure difference between the working chamber and uh, the distillation, the heating power that we introduce to the distillation, and of course the uh, flow of the, of the vapor. And all these items we optimized by increasing the height of the distillation, by increasing the diameter, by reducing the pressure of the, um, the pressure difference of the working chamber and the dis between uh, to the distillation, and by regulating the heating power. And finally, we also optimized the buffle uh, plates in order to make sure that if oil is getting into the vapor, that we still are able to keep it back and not e uh, exiting the distillation. Another step we made is um, precision applications do not require only filmic, um, s filmic uh, restrictions, but also particle um, contamination. And so we also looked into this area, what can we do to improve the particle um, contamination level of such uh, solvent systems. What did we do? First of all, we looked at the whole design of the construction of the machine and made sure that we avoid any kind of dirt, dirt formation in the system. Secondly, we electropolished the working chamber in order to avoid that there is any deposit on the working chamber wall that can cause recontamination. In addition, we selected uh, the right filters that can be used and we adapted the filter performance in order to not overflow the filter. And uh, another step was we used uh, suitable holders for the parts and did a redesign of the rotation frame in order to make it more accessible to the parts and create less uh, particles. We also optimized the vacuum technology and uh, finally we eliminated all use of non-ferrous metals in the machine. What is the conclusion? Well, I wouldn't stand here and tell you, um, well, all this didn't work. Of course, obviously we had uh, a good result. And um, so the conclusion is, here you see a comment of uh, one of our customers who actually use such a precision solvent cleaning machine from us, uh, EcoC Core, um, and he cleans vacuum, high vacuum components, and the result did exceed the expectations. He doesn't only reach grade four, but grade two cleanliness requirements from AS ASML standards, and grade two are the most stringent filmic requirements actually out there in the uh, high vacuum uh, industry. The conclusion is with a compatible intake of contamination, solvent machines can definitely be a solution to clean very um, high filmic particle requirements for, from the vacuum uh, technology, synfilm coating, and the medical components. Especially the lower investment costs and the lower running costs are a very appealing uh, factor that makes uh, the solvent cleaning systems definitely very attractive uh, as an option or alternative to uh, aqueous systems. Thank you and uh, looking forward to your questions. Hello, Volker. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, you have now still the possibility to send in your questions, so please feel free and um, 
yeah, raise, give us your questions you still have. Um, we will receive them live, so then Volker will answer. Um, we'll be happy to answer your questions. I try. <laughs> um, first question um, from Tom. What types of uh, dirt are not suitable for solvent cleaning? So t what should I, yeah, um, to what should I put my attention if I'm thinking about solvent cleaning? Okay, uh, well, uh, generally there is one uh, rule and that means like cleans alike. What does that mean? Um, Non-polar uh, contaminants can be removed very well with non-polar um, uh, sol or with non-polar cleaning fluids and vice versa. So that means when you have to deal with polar substances like salts and stuff um, and they are especially when they are dried on you can't remove them with solvents. On the other hand when you have to deal with oil and stuff you can easily and very well remove uh, them with uh, solvents. Could you give some more examples about non and non-polar and polar? Um, yeah, I mean generally water water is is polar and water contains substances polar substances like minerals, salts, lime, and uh, also uh, coolants typically uh, contain. Uh, except of water also polar substances and um, some sorts of, of uh, minerals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, your focus in the presentation was solvent cleaning. Now drawing um, the comparison to aqueous cleaning, um, in which sense you would say that aqueous cleaning or solvent cleaning is cheaper than aqueous cleaning? Uh, there are good question. Uh, there are several uh, aspects. The first aspect is uh, investment costs are typically uh, less expensive or lower uh, due to uh, missing uh, periphery like uh, water treatment systems, um, like chemical dosing units, and so on. So uh, this saves money. And uh, the second aspect is uh, the running costs. First of all, uh, you have t the detergent that you use are uh, degrading and you need then to drain the uh, solution and uh, to add uh, or to refill the whole solution. That means uh, it takes time. That means uh, you have energy cost due to uh, heat up uh, of the solution and of course the chemicals by itself. And uh, the third, um, the third reason is uh, that you also in drying uh, you have uh, a lower enthalpy of a lower energy, drying energy of solvents, which is also uh, giving us the possibility to uh, have an easier and lower energy consumption during the drying process. Mm -hmm. um, another question, Bettina would like to know um, about the benefits of electro polishing of the working chamber. Can you say some? Yeah, I mean, that? there's a general rule: the the more the smoother the surface is, the less contamination or debris can be built up on a surface. Um, that means when you have a rough surface, you have a very quick buildup of contamination, and this is exactly what you cannot have, especially for precision applications. And uh, so the also the cleaning um, effort for polished surfaces is less because you can easier remove uh, debris when it builds up. Mm -hmm. Another question from Federico. Um, what about deburring with solvent? Is it possible? Deburring with solvents? Uh, not really. Uh, I never heard about that. Uh, mm -hmm. So I can't imagine that uh, you can deburr with solvents. Um, and there is also one uh, rule that really eliminates deburring because uh, it's not wise to uh, work with solvents under such uh, extremely high pressure because of the flammability of these products. Um, and even with non-flammable uh, non uh, solvents, I don't think it's possible. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, one more question. You uh, talked about um, cleaning of metal parts in your um, examples. Is plastics also cleaning of plastics also possible with solvent cleaning? Yes, most of the plastics definitely, um, especially the, the, the high quality um, plastics materials. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some plastics materials that are when they are have a melting point uh, that is too low, you basically can't use them because of the temperature. Mm -hmm. um, in addition, there are also questions of uh, removing the uh, softeners in the plastic by the solvent. This is true, but this process takes much longer than the treatment time of the um, pro than the treatment time of the cleaning process. So mm. this is no obstacle in general. Okay. Do you have some examples for um, hike um, for the plastics which can be used? Uh, peak pom. PVDF, all these, these high-grade um, plastics are easily to be used or cleaned in the solvent cleaning processes. Okay, Volker, thank you very much. Um, the thank next you. presentation will be at 2.30. And um, so we will end now the Q&A session. Uh, of course, all the other questions you may have, um, please hand them in. And Volker and our other experts will um, answer them afterwards. Thank you. Of course. Okay. Thanks for listening. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed our lectures so far and could collect many valuable informations. Now follows our last lecture presented by Mr. Ulrich Evers for highest cleaning requirements. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome from my side. With my presentation, I would like to give you some overview about different possibilities we have, possibilities uh, for further improvement of the cleaning, of the cleanliness of your parts. So I don't want to talk about machines, but about, about solutions, about solutions that we can use in, in, in different types of machines, in standard machines, in uh, special applicated machines, customized machines. We have our possibilities with it. So I would like to start with the, uh, the cleaning, fine cleaning with plasma, with low pressure plasma. The plas plasma cleaning is not a really new invention, uh, but nowadays we have, we see a focus on, on very fine cleanness, on, f on filmic cleanness, cleanliness. In the past, uh, the demands for cleanliness uh, were a lot about a particular as um, contaminations so everybody wanted to remove all the particles on the parts and count the rest particles nowadays more and more the cleanliness of the surface is coming into the focus the uh, demands for really fine cleaning we uh, you uh, the need is to know what is really r the last residue on the parts what can be cleaned off especially when you do uh, as a next production step, if you do a gluing, if you do a painting, any, any type of, of surface, uh, surface preparation. So you need a very, very good, uh, a very fine cleaned surface. You see it here on the, on the picture. We have a contamination and if we have the substrate, the workpiece is contaminated. If it is contaminated, we have uh, and you do a paint, whatever, you see the, the, these ball, these, these yeah. drops staying on the, on the surface, but that's not what you want to, want to have. You want to have a, a very exact, exact surface uh, where the substrate, where the, where the, uh, where the glue and, the, the, glue and the, the paint is really, gives you a very fine, fine surface on your parts. Therefore, the fine clean, the filmy clinic is coming more and more into the focus. This can be reached very good with the, with the use of, uh, of plasma, with a low pressure plasma. You see here uh, how, how it works more or less. The plasma cleaning is a final step. You always, it's not a step for, for rough, dirty parts. It is a fine cleaning step. You have to clean off the dirt and the, 
uh, yeah, the big volumes of dirt you have to clean off traditionally with a with a uh, with a liquid cleaning or whatever. And afterwards, you can do as a final step on that dried part. You can use the plasma as a additional step for the for the last cleaning to remove the oil from the from the surface and. It is a, it's a dry cleaning. It's a dry cleaning with a non-contact of the surface. Yeah. The principle of the plasma clinic, as I said, is not a new principle. What we do nowadays, we combine it. We combine it with a traditional wet cleaning, which makes it much more simple and easier to handle it and gives you a lot, lot of, uh, of advantages in the production cost and these things. So here we can see one of our standard machines. It's a, a type machine, a Echo C Core. It's a machine running with a solvent process. The solvent processes are very good for the additional plasma cleaning. For we we need the we need a, a system that runs under vacuum, and that's we have uh, normally in a in a solvent machine. So the integration of the plasma step is very very simple, very easy here. You see here on the on the right on the right photo, uh, we see the chamber where the basket is in, and uh, really the, the plasma is running at the moment, and it gives this 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 purple light. Um, let's go to the yeah, okay. H how does it work the plasma cleaning? We have the chamber, and inside the chamber are the work pieces. There we do our normal uh, washing, in this case a degreasing by a, by a solvent, by a alcohol or whatever. Afterwards, after the wet cleaning, the parts are dried. When the parts are dried, then we re you re reduce the, the pressure inside the chamber again at a very, very low absolute pressure. We, we float the chamber with a, uh, with a process gas the process gas is normally uh, an oxygen, so we can use pure oxygen, which is, works very well, or, or we can use normal air, which has a lower, lower volume of, of, of oxygen, but it works as well. And then when the chamber is floated, we do the, we do the ignition, we do the ignition of the, uh, of the gas, and then yeah, what the result we have then is, uh, let's say, uh, it's a burning. We, we burn off more or less. We burn off the residue, the last film, the last molecules of the of the oil of the grease, grease with, which is on the surface. Uh, the big advantage is what we need for this. You see it here on the uh, on the on the picture. Is, is is not a lot. We need we need the electrodes. We need some 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 equipment for floating the chamber, etc. And we need a very very good vacuum technology. But it is an additional step that don't cost you a lot of additional time, just one or two minutes, and afterwards you can have the you have the, the clean parts by the plasma. So result of the plasma cleaning. Here we see we see a, a validation. We uh, we have taken several several parts, totally different material. All these are parts from customers. We did a cleaning with a normal degreasing, a normal uh, cleaning with a with a solvent, and after this, after this, we did an additional step with a uh, with a plasma cleaning. And you see, after the wet cleaning, after wet cleaning, we reach an average uh, surface tension of, of forty, let's say roughly forty-two millinewton per meter. And after the after the additional plasma step, we raise it up up to 68 millinewton per meter. So this is really this is a a big uh, a big improvement, a big increasement of the of the surface surface cleanliness, and may help you in your in your next production steps to to get a better a better gluing, a better uh, painting, or whatever you do with the parts afterwards. Big advantage again on the of the of the system I showed you here is 
we have it integrated in one of our machines. So for you as a customer, it's not a, not a big investment. We have an optimized process time. It's just one minute more. We don't need time for, for putting the parts into another machine, into a plasma machine, whatever. We have, you, you don't need additional space for a second machine, for a plasma cleaning machine. And so altogether the operation costs and the invest costs are re relatively lower. And you can use, you still have a, a normal degreasing, a normal washing machine where you either switch on the plasma cleaning or you don't switch it over, don't switch it on. So you have all possibilities with this. Also maybe for the future, if you invest in a new machine, maybe it's, it's interesting to have it here and now, maybe when the future demands will, will rise up, then you are prepared for this. Okay, let's, let's leave the plasma cleaning and let's talk about what we call ultrasonic plus. Ultrasonic plus is, is a possibility to, uh, to improve the, uh, uh, the result of the ultrasonic cleaning. Ultrasonic cleaning, I'm sure you know everybody about it. Ultrasonic cleaning is we have uh, any liquid, uh, uh, a, a water or a solvent, and we have an immersion process. And in this immersion process, we, we, uh, we have ultrasonic generators and we switch on the, the ultrasonic clinic. So if we have the ultrasonic plus, I have here a, a short video that I will show you soon. And here we see a, a working chamber, a working chamber with a liquid inside. And normally when you switch on ultrasonic, you have the bubbles going, going straight up. If we add the ultrasonic plus, then you will see the bubbles are not going straight up. They, they make a, uh, additional movement to all sides and additional oscillating. And all this helps you to bring more mechanical energy into the liquid to get a better removement of the, of the parts from the, to remove the, the dirt from the surface. It, it increases a little bit the, the noise, so it's a little bit more noisy than the normal ultrasonic, but still in the range. So when I start it, you will, you will see the effect and you will hear it, that it is a little bit louder. And then when we switch it off, you will see the bubbles go straight on, straight up, uh, and the noise will be a little bit lower then. Let's see. With ultrasonic plus, and now without ultrasonic plus normal ultrasonic. I hope it was only a, a short sequence, but I, but I hope you have seen the, the differences. So, as I said, the ultrasonic plus can be used everywhere where we have an ultrasonic equipment. So, uh, when it, the effect is we, we change the pressure, we change the pressure in the chamber. So that you ha the higher the pressure in the chamber is, the, the, the better the result of the ultrasonic is. And we, we change the pressure. We don't leave it, we go up with the pressure because uh, we mostly use it in, ultra in, uh, in solvent machines. And solvent machines are machines running under vacuum. And there we have to have the possibility to go up with the pressure uh, to get this effects where the, where the bubbles are uh, better, give a better result on the, on the surface of the parts. It's a little bit tricky. The technology is a little bit tricky behind because we are talking about solvent machines and solvent machines. Solvent is normally a flammable medium nowadays and you must be careful about possible explosions and these things, but we know what we are doing at that case. So, the throughput is not impacted by it. The throughput is not impacted. This means uh, you can switch it on or off during the normal ultrasonic uh, treatment. It is a good use for for party uh, for to form removing particles. Then the with the plasma we had the the filmic uh, the filmic uh, contamination, and now we are uh, ultrasonic plus is again more uh, to form remove small particles. It is good for small, tiny uh, components. So here you can see one, one component with a ball with a hole inside. Inside is, a, is, an, is an air bubble. And if you now change, 
if you now change the pressure in the chamber, the air bubble uh, changes the size and gets better out and liquid is better coming in. And by the ultrasonic close, you get an adder you get a better and get a better implosion of the ultrasonic bubbles on the surface and in the bores to remove and to clean it everywhere. Very good system. Okay. Next thing, next thing is uh, ultra is a uh, what call we call it high pressure spray cleaning with solvent. A solvent, a solvent application normally is a degreasing. Uh, solvent traditional is a degreasing, does not have a, a big mechanical effect. Uh, the, the parts are, are in the solvent and, and the cleanliness is done by the, more or less by the degreasing. And we now do, uh, we want you to bring more, more uh, mechanical energy into the, into, the, into the cleaning, into the chamber. And therefore we do a spraying at higher pressures, higher pressure inside the chamber. inside the chamber. When we talk about a higher pressure, it's not a real high pressure as you do it with water. It's just up to 16 bars. But uh, think about it that a uh, solvent machine normally is a vacuum machine where we run the process under vacuum under, under one bar, absolute. And now we go with the spraying, we go up to 16 bar, which is a, is a, which is an, in this is a big range, is a big range. And still we are using solvent and solvent is flammable, flammable as I said before. And you must be careful with, uh, with steam, with vapor, uh, that you fulfill all the explosive, uh, the explosion uh, equipment, uh, the safety against explosion. Okay. When we do the spraying, we not, we do not only want to spray from outside on the parts because a solvent cleaning is quite often a cleaning of, uh, of bulk material. So we have a basket and a lot of, of parts inside that rotate and we don't want only to spray from the outside where we maybe not reach uh, all surfaces and all, all, all parts inside. So we said, okay, let's, let's try to make a spraying also inside inside the bulk or inside, inside uh, the work pieces. And therefore we created a system, as you see it here, we make a, a spray bar in the middle of the chamber. So we changed our, our gear, our gear system for the rotation on the back of the, of the working chamber and that we could, pay, that we could uh, put the, the spraying bar inside the chamber. We yeah, we we added we added here a, a high pressure pump with a separate circulation, and when we have this spray bar in, inside the chamber, for sure we can't use a normal uh, a normal basket or a normal normal uh, tray or pallet for the parts. We have to think about special solutions that gives us the change to come really inside inside the goods to have the spray effect here. So all this sounds simple, looks simple, is more complicated because it's a vacuum machine and it's the other range of the pressure we are now working with. And we, yeah, from the technical side, it's, it's more complicated than it, than it looks like here. But it gives a really, good, a really good effect and shortens your cycle time because you don't need to wash that long. You can have a, a shorter cycle, you can reduce the, the washing time with it. So, last solution, last possibility we have is something we called PPC, pulsated pressure cleaning. Pulsated pressure cleaning is more used for aqueous solutions. Aqueous solutions uh, run normally under, under normal pressure. We have a normal immersion process at, at one bar or whatever. And we can reach a very good effect when we change, when we change the pre pressure in the chamber, which means we, we lower, in this case, we lower the pressure in the chamber. 
what happens if you go if we go down with a chamber uh, with a with a pres pressure in the chamber uh, the water let's say begins to boil uh, the lower the pressure is the lower uh, the, the faster the the water is boiling and this boiling causes bubbles and then we we rise up the uh, the pressure again and this means these this boiling process is stopped rapidly it is stopped and uh, the bubbles are exploding again and this change we do very very fast very fast that's why we call it pulsated pressure cleaning because we are really yeah pulsating yeah we 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 lower the pressure we go up with the pressure we lower we go up and 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 for to 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 ex, uh, to to create the bubbles and to make the the bubbles explode on the on the surface yeah if the the bubbles now is exploding on a surface means it removes the liquid from this part of the surface and fresh fresh liquid fresh cleaning liquid can go on this surface so we have a an exchange of the medium all the time on the surface which uh, improves the cleaning again uh, and on the other hand by the by the explosion on the bubbles of the bubbles on the surface we have yeah um, micro jet we have a micro jet where where we have a, a, a big power on on this uh, specific specific surface part okay so the 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 bubbles are, are collapsing yes yeah this is again for for complicated geometries for for small tiny parts for parts with special special contamination on it uh, the difference to the ultrasonic plus I talked about is uh, ultrasonic plus is has an effect where where you have an ultrasonic use and where the ultrasonic is working on the part then you can improve the ultrasonic by the ultrasonic plus here the pulsated pressure cleaning is really everywhere is really everywhere in the in the liquid in the chamber and reaches all surfaces all all parts on the on the work piece and gives you yeah everywhere uh, the, a good cleaning it's it doesn't matter if it's inside inside uh, a geometry or if it's outside it's really everywhere ultrasonic is there where the ultrasonic effect is coming to the part but the pulsated pressure clinic yeah reaches all the all the uh, contours it can be it is more mostly uh, in use for uh, for aqueous solutions and can be integrated in all kind of machines in chamber machines in multi-stage machines etc yeah i would say that that's it i wanted to give you an overview about different different solutions it's a little bit uh yeah four, four totally different different solutions uh, i hope it was not too confusing for you what what we can have we should talk in uh, in all special applications about how we can help you how we can improve the cleanliness of your parts and i'm pleased to answer your questions now we have some time left thank you hello hello ulrich Thank you for the presentation okay. um, and also thank you for all the questions we already received. Um, please feel free if you have questions now or during the Q&A session, uh, you can hand them in by via the comment field and uh, we will receive them live and Ulrich will answer them. Um, first question Ulrich uh, regarding the stains on parts. Is it possible to um, improve stains uh, with plasma cleaning? To remove the, the stains mm -hmm. um, the using the plasma technology. Mm -hmm. uh, the plasma technology was developed especially for removing the last oil and, and grease and uh, non-polar substances on the parts, the real, the filmic, uh, uh, the filmic residues it was not specially for for stains stains are coming from 
from a, from a water process where we have, uh, for example, salts or whatever in the water, that, uh, and the, the salts are dried on the parts, and normally you, the, you can't remove them by, by plasma. Maybe, maybe it improves the to overall situation a little bit, but it is, not, mm -hmm. it is not the topic for the plasma cleaning. Okay. We have uh, one question from Mikal. Um, at what frequency does the ultrasonic plus works work? Uh, in the working chamber, you use uh, an ultrasonic, ultrasonic unit, and the ultrasonic unit normally works at 25 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, we use 40 kilohertz or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and the ultrasonic plus is just just a method to improve the 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 effect of the ultrasonic. It, mm -hmm. it does not really depend on on which frequency we are working with. We are talking about okay. two different two different topics. Okay. So you can use ultrasonic plus with all frequencies. Mm -hmm. yeah. So ultrasonic plus is not yeah connect or linked to a specific frequency. That's, yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Um, Federico is asking if uh, plasma cleaning or when you use plasma cleaning, if it's possible to have more than one part in the inside the working chamber. Uh, the plasma cleaning is is done in a working chamber and the very good effect of the plasma cleaning is that the plasma atmosphere is really everywhere. It is not coming to one single part or the whole chamber is more or less filled with the plasma. The effect is, is everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you can use the whole batch in the chamber mm -hmm. and if you have small parts with lots of parts inside, if you have one single piece part, if you have maybe a bulk material, doesn't matter. The plasma effect is on everywhere mm -hmm. on the part. Yes. Okay. Several parts. <laughs> That's the answer. Um, when you were talking about the ultrasonic plus, yeah. um, you talked about solvent cleaning. Is it also possible to use aqueous cleaning? Ultrasonic plus in aqueous systems. Okay. The uh, the effect of the ultrasonic plus is that we change the pressure and that we lift up the 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 pressure in the working chamber, and uh, solvent machines are working in a vacuum system, and there you have the possibility to to play to to change the the vacuum to change the the pressure inside. Mm -hmm. uh, a normal aqueous system works at atmospheric atmospheric pressure mm -hmm. there's there is no range you can you can differ you can change anything mm -hmm. in principle yes you can have a, an aqueous machine working with lower pressure inside the chamber and then you can do the same steps but normally the uh, aqueous machines are not running under vacuum there therefore it, is, it would be a much higher invest to impo uh, to implement it mm -hmm. there okay then uh, we have an interesting question regarding the price of the plasma equipment. <laughs> price? Okay, let's... <laughs> oh, it's a good topic. Yeah, yeah let's, <laughs> let's, let's talk about money. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as I said, uh, the plasma cleaning is not a fixed system. It's, it's a, a method, a possibility to improve the cleaning, and it can be implemented in several types of machines. Mm -hmm. And so it really depends on what type of machine you have. And it's, sometimes you have a machine where you only need the, the plasma uh, system itself. Sometimes mm -hmm. you have to improve or to change the whole vacuum technology mm -hmm. to, to get this, this effect. Mm -hmm. So the price really can differ. To give, you, to give you an idea, to give you an range, if we are talking about uh, a standard machine, an Echo C Corp, uh, a machine for, for a big basket, 600, mm -hmm. 400, 300 roughly, uh, when we implement the plasma cleaning there, we are talking about costs of roughly 40,000 euro. Mm -hmm. So did I got it right that um, it's not about a plug and play system with the plasma, but that also the vacuum equipment and the, the components which are besides yes. the plasma are important yes. to consider. Yes, yeah. it's not only the plasma electrodes, you need more. Even mm -hmm. the, the whole equipment around, we are working at very low pressure inside the chamber. So the vacuum technology and, and some things more must be fit together to this. Okay, but in general, is it uh, possible to retrofit the machines with plasma? Yes, in general, yeah. yes. The the plasma equipment needs space inside the working chamber, so in, in an existing machine you, re you reduce a little bit the space you have for the, for the cleaning of your mm -hmm. parts left. Mm -hmm. uh, and it depends on the, on the age of the machine, if it's uh, economic to, to mm -hmm. retrofit it there, but in general, yes. Yeah. 
Better buy a new machine. Huh? Better buy, yes, better, better buy a new <laughs> machine for sure. <laughs> that's, that's the idea behind. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and uh, one last question: Is it possible to test those um, processes? Yes. Um, before buying a new machine. <laughs> yes, uh, we have a showroom in our in our site in, in Filderstadt, Stuttgart area, where mm -hmm. we have all not all but a lot of different machines and there is implemented ultrasonic plus there is implemented uh, uh, pulsated pressure cleaning and, and all the things I, I talked about so if you have a request if you have a need you are invited to come with your parts and mm -hmm. then we can test and you can see if it's, it's if, if it's worth to to spend the money for the for, for plasma cleaning or, or whatever if the result is really better for your parts mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much, Ulrich, for answering the questions. Of course, um, all questions you still might have, um, please hand them in via the comment field and we will answer them, or Ulrich and the other experts will answer them uh, afterwards. Ulrich, thank you and have a good thank day. You, yes, thank you, Babette. Thank you, Ulrich, also from my side. Um, Dear valued customer, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today during our UCM Virtual Customer Day. It was a first time event for us in this uh, virtual world. Um, first experience for us also due to the current situation. Um, so we are now at the end of our live lectures, um, but you can go to our virtual booth and navigate and find various information such as the brochures or the UCM smart line uh, through the animation that will explain uh, the new machine and the process again in uh, very good details. And of course you can also watch all lectures that you have seen today in German or in English again on the virtual booth just by navigating to the left side um, uh, topic icons and selecting the right topic and then you can see and watch the uh, live stream again. Um, of course, as Babette has said, we are uh, very pleased to uh, receiving your uh, further questions and being in live contact with you. Um, from our side, um, stay healthy, uh, take care. Your cleaning experts from UCM and EcoClean.